All right, so here we have the item now in my office, and I'm looking at it, and looks like it's about 13 inches by about 13 for this little rack here. And I am able to take just a standard size plate. This is 10 and a half inch, and it kind of wants to hit the top when you put it in. But if you put it in, stand it up like that, I mean, it technically can go in there. And so that's the one that I would worry about the most. It kind of touches on this side, and toward the back, it'll go up. So it looks like a person can take this and uh, move it around to different. I think you could even go like this, possibly. Nope. That looks like it's for cuts, but yeah, it stands up uh, a normal size plate. That's a nice teriyaki. Or, uh, this is a, a nice Noritake Japan plate. So I'm sure if it can do this plate, it can do regular microwavable plates. Uh, as far as this hardware and everything, this is the same size as you see on most sinks that powers a faucet this tubing is the same size i'm going to be starting in on this i'll have to uh, see what i got to do there i'll see what i have to do and uh, this hose actually is it's a little bit rubbery it's it's not as brittle feeling as i thought it would be it's it's a little bit rubbery there's a small amount of of elasticity to this now it might wear out, but it's not like those plastic ones that are just completely plastic, like polypropylene. I'm not sure exactly. This is just a little bit more rubbery. Feels like it would have some give. So that's not bad, actually, for that type of a hose because it's not pressurized. So it comes with this set of instructions. Receipt check, be sure everything's there. 70 degrees Celsius. It basically takes the water up to pretty darn close to boiling. And then, not so much that it would all flash off, but enough that um, it cleans the dishes. I've actually run my dishes under just hot water and the food will melt away, but it takes a while. And you go through a bunch of hot water. And uh, so this one will recycle the water and do a few cycles. It'll get most of it off and then it looks like it has this clean out at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the interior. Is this, I guess maybe that's not removable. It doesn't feel removable, so I'll have to just like do that by hand, which will be, it's too bad that that was not removable, honestly. Uh, if, they, if they had made that removable, that would be nice. Also, this is single wall, and there's no insulation, so some of these would probably be more efficient if there was a, an inch or so of insulation. But for my use case, I didn't have the room for it. This is the most compact one that I saw. There's one other that opens from the top that would go up to 16 and a half inches. It, this one, I was thinking it was going to be 15 to 16 inches, but it's actually ends up being my dimension that is going to be yay or nay is 16 and a half right there. And right there I have 16 and 3 eighths, which is actually about what I have. That's coming up at 16 and 3 eighths. Up to about right here, you could probably do 16 and 3 eighths from your countertop to a cabinet bottom. And it would slide up under to about right there. Then it needs another quarter inch or so. And then up here at that point, that's uh, 16 and 7 eighths, just under 17 inches. So that was the determining factor in me getting this one. And this one, from what I can tell, is new to the market. I haven't seen 
any reviews on it or any videos of it running. It's single wall, no insulation, but that gets me just under where I need to go. It's going to go right underneath my cabinet, and then I will have a small dishwasher. We had looked at larger dishwashers, but decided against it. This actually ends up being the third time I ordered this. The first time was on eBay, and the seller didn't ship for two weeks, and then when I called them on it, they just refunded me, said my package was lost. Then I ordered through Walmart. I figured, you know, there's so many sellers on Walmart. They have a really good return policy. It seemed iffy, so I was kind of going for the, the best return policy, even though eBay's is stellar. Um, so I ordered from them, and they sent the wrong item. Uh, the seller was kind of uh, giving me the runaround a little bit, like kind of asking for pictures and then giving me like a stock, hey, did you get it? I sent pictures twice that needed more pictures, and then they ended up saying, hey, did you get your item in another email? And it's like, hey, we're starting over. So I called in, they gave me my money back, and they said keep the item. That was Walmart that did that, not the seller. So this is the third time. This one through Amazon, and I received it in about three days. So this one, I believe, was already in the country. They had a few available, three or four of them. It's not real high volume. As you can see, the way it was packed, it's not high volume yet. It maybe it would be in the future. For everybody that has a hard time getting another brand into their kitchen, a lot of times they'll say countertop, but when you see them, they have them off to the side, and they don't actually fit. So the people that are making these and designing them, they should really, really go to a few people's homes and look around to see what they have, like apartments. See what apartment people have. See what people with 1,200 square foot homes have and design it for that and get these dishes down close close to the ground. You could even have it sprayed from the side and get the dishes sideways or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to be an engineer for the dishwashers, but I did want to test the one that would fit my use case, which is 16 and 3 8 inches right here. And it looks like... There's different measurements on a lot of different listings of this same one. If you go to AliExpress, they'll say 380 millimeters. Some of them will say 400. Some will say 450 by 450 by 450 because they don't want to have problems. But it looks like here it is 15 and 3 quarters. 3 quarters. Like 11 sixteenths. 15 and 11 sixteenths. 15 and 3 quarter width. And then this dimension could be a little tough. It's almost like it's got to be eyeballed a little. So you want to be generously 20 inches maybe on that one because you have water outlets, water inlets, and a power supply here. So technically 15 to 16 inches, but you're going to need room for that. So in my case, I'll be sticking out from the cabinets a little bit, and uh, I do have enough countertop I believe to hold all of that and it'll slide on the cabinets and then I'll have the water hookups and the power there so as far as size works this is about the only one all of the others were 17.2 every single one 17.2 and uh, they would open from the front a lot of times slide out here it says warm tips before working keep steady close the door open the intake before put tableware, please clean the residual of tableware. So clean it out. They don't have a way for you to clean it out. You might have to make something. Machine was finished. Intake test went in production. There are less residual is normal phenomenon. There are less residual in is normal phenomenon. When in working or finish, please don't open the door right now. Lest empriosis. After 15 minutes, finish work and then open the door. Better for for dry. So let it run. Let it stop. Let it drip. Then open it. If necessary, please use professional dishwashing power. Prohibit use normal detergent when washing. Please don't open the door. Be high temperatures and hot water. So this can burn you because of the high temperature and there is no 
door interlock or anything that I can see. I don't see uh, things like this, but I don't think that's an interlock. Maybe it is. It's possible. There's just a little bit of metal right there underneath this. But the door is opaque, so you can't really see the dishes very well. And I don't think I'm going to turn it on just yet because I don't want to mess anything up. I'd probably just get it set up, get the water ran to it, and then turn it on and see how I like it. All right, so there's my plumbing situation. It looks like I was able to use the fitting provided. And it just goes right after my supply. Well, there's the sink lines, and then there's my supply line. It actually, I thought I was going to need something from here over. I was going to get a way to go from here to my... Uh, I was going to split this originally is what I thought because it's a very similar line but what they do is they give you exactly what you need if you have plumbing like mine and I'm sure what I have is very common so it just goes in between your faucet it's the line that goes to your faucet it went right to it and I was able to put that in and uh, it got me right to a quick connect but you, if you notice the blue handle is in line with uh the um the supply and that's actually on normally the when that points at something if it's in line with it it would be on so i don't know if that's incorrect or correct but that's the on position for the third line and you can turn it off by going in line with the third line i would think it would be in line would be on but that's the on position for anybody okay so here's the back this one right here uh, it has a washer and then I was able to put that on and then screw that in place but the part that screws in is not independent this doesn't screw in and so this part won't screw independent of this so you got to screw it until it bottoms out and it bottomed out going the wrong way so I have it going the wrong way and coming on back and then it goes underneath and that's what I'm using. And here's the drain tube. So this kind of just sits over and, and that's it. I guess it kind of fits. It kind of clicks on a little bit. You can see it took some, some doing to get it off. but And then I did put just a hose clamp on there. Put it on nice and firm, but not too much because these are just plastic parts. As you can see, it just barely fits underneath the cabinet. It was the only dishwasher that was going to fit, and it just barely slid under, so we were happy about that. Unfortunately, we don't have any other options in the market for a small dishwasher that would fit on the countertop. And i got to tell you, countertop dishwashers, they seem kind of maybe silly to some people, and they did a little bit to me, but... After having used one and never bending over, it's been really nice. I had a very large Maytag growing up, and it just, you'd end up bending over and putting stuff in the bottom, and, uh, but boy, it could wash some dishes, so that was a trade-off, but this, uh, this and many other countertop dishwashers are very convenient. This one is working. I probably put 30 or 40 loads of dishes in there, and they came out clean almost every time maybe one out of 10 or one out of 20 dishes might need a little bit of scrub if it was something that was used on the stove top and burned on maybe some egg egg was hard to get off but um, all of that and then we start to see this little crack show up in the plastic right there that was after about 10 or 15 loads. And we did get some errors here on, uh, we would see 
this side and the this button and this button would flash and it was usually after draining and then it would try to restart and the pump wouldn't start and then uh, the heater would hit the high limit and turn off. You'd hear it fry some water for a moment and then the, the high limit would kick it off and then you would just see, you know, it doesn't take long and it errors out. So we were getting some errors but then after a while it was it stopped doing that. I don't know what happened. It just I, I figured let's just keep it for a week or two and see how it goes and it did start to do better and so we were really happy about that and then it started to have fill errors where it wouldn't fill. You'd, you'd turn it on, it would go through a cycle, and then the second cycle would come about and it would not fill. And that would cause it to air out because the heater would come on also in that instance. So either the pump wouldn't work, it would have water in there, and then, or other times, um, it wouldn't fill. It would, either, it would either not have water in there and the heater would come on or the pump it would have water and the pump wouldn't turn on and and either way it would error out so we did get those errors but then we started to get this crack and then after about 20 washes this window started to give way and uh, I ran it with the plastic on the back side of the window I think I took some video of that Maybe I could drop that now or not, but uh, I'll try to edit this video a little bit. But there was some plastic, and it makes it kind of opaque, and you'll see that when you're looking, when you're shopping for this, that it's kind of like an opaque look through there. But that started to fall off, and so I just peeled it off one day, and then uh, I didn't yank it hard on it or anything. It's just a, it's an expansion and contraction issue here is what we have because this this terminates down into a lip right here that makes it drip inside and you can see the lip right here and the crack is right here and then that goes down to this and then the crack is now coming across this lip so I think what's going on is expansion and contraction over and over and at some point it might crack all the way through but um, I don't know if this metal is really up to, or not metal, I don't know if this plastic is really up to the task, the way that's looking. And uh, it gets warm to the touch, you know, you, you run it and uh, you can feel the heat on the unit. It seems like it couldn't get too hot because it's not insulated, so no matter what, and and water will boil at some point so it's not going to get any hotter than boiling in there so it, the plastic should be designed it should hold up like it should like maybe they should use recycled plastic or something that's already been time tested that's how I am with products this is why this is a big reason I don't buy new cars and a lot of the reason I don't like products that haven't been proven in the market because this is the type of thing that you get whether it be a door handle and then you're the guinea pig, and that's what's going on here, honestly. This is silly. Look at this. Big whopping crack. Now, that's not the end of it. You go inside here, and, you know, my girlfriend uses this, and we it was to make our lives a lot easier, and it has. In fact, we're going to get another one of another brand that has better reviews than the one I'm giving right now. And honestly, I don't really want to be associated with this. I actually don't like being associated with this. I was excited to open it. Uh, this is cracking off here now. We are not abusing this at all. We are putting dishes in it and then we're turning it on. And this, originally, I did not pull on it too hard because it was stuck in there. And I thought it was fixed. And I thought, man, why would they put a fixed one in there? And then after a couple loads, um, my girlfriend had gotten it out. And I guess it was a lot easier to get out. So, um, I think they know this is going to happen though. If you notice here, these cracks that developed in this, all of this came in maybe 15 to 20 washes in, and we were using it two to three times a day because it is a small washer, and we were enjoying it. We were like, if we only had three or four dishes, we we're like, hey, let's use a dishwasher, you know, because it was really making things easy 
you didn't have to bend over to get to it. Oh, shoot. Um, some of this has actually gone in the impeller because I wasn't, this wasn't brought to my attention until it was all the way pieces coming off. Um, and so there's like, there's the hole for the impeller. You can stick your finger in there, but you know, this got this little stop right here, which makes me think that they, the people that designed this did not trust that lip very well anyway, because that lip would have been enough to keep this lifted off the ground because that's where the strainer is and if that goes all the way to the bottom it's not going to strain it's going to block it so it looks like they already had that idea in mind and there is a peg there that keeps it from going any lower and there's this piece of metal so I think maybe this base people are buying and they're possibly designing the rest or the entire thing is being designed but I wouldn't be surprised if a factory is just putting out that bottom plate with all the electronics on it but I actually don't know to be honest with you but now if you look closer here there's a crack developing right there all the way around and worst of all that is that crack right there I don't know if you can see it is right there that one is pointing toward the outside of the chassis so when that cracks all the way out here it's just gonna flat out leak you know these are internal cracks and here's another crack right here if you notice that crack that goes toward the spray bar and they're all just slowly showing up cracks that sh slowly show up and um, for a while I had a little bit of fill issue I think this is a sensor so I had like a chip brush and I was kinda going in here and cleaning this out in case um, but uh, we used we used some dishwashing soap we used uh, we used the cheap stuff, and then we also have um, we also have this finish these Powerball things, and this seems to have like silicate in it or something. It leaves like these little pieces of sand when you get done. If there's a bowl that will hold it, like the top, the bottom rim of a bowl or something, like under here, there will be a couple pieces of sand still there so uh, that's something a person should know about that it does have like sandblasting to it it also has this uh, polyvinyl alcohol it's this sodium sodium silicate I'm thinking that might be sandblasting but I don't know but it's it's basically sodium up here here we go polyvinyl alcohol which I guess is FDA approved, but that's mold release. So that's how, you know, it's water soluble. That's how these things are held together and the water makes that polyvinyl alcohol. But that's going into the food, so I don't know. You know, honestly, it's kind of, it's diluted by the time it's had enough rinsing. So it's probably not a big deal, but it's something to know about. And then uh, as far as ingredients on this one, it just doesn't say. It just says uh, enzymes. Contains no phosphorus or chlorine ingredients, enzymes. So I guess that's like a stomach or something. But I like the way that stuff smells. And it's cheaper. And it doesn't have polyvinyl alcohol in it. So, I mean, it's a toss-up. But you have to have a working dishwasher to use those. And when you buy one and within... I bought this on the 10th. And it took three or four days to come in, and now it's the 30th. So we're talking two weeks. And, and nothing but button pressing and dishes on my part right here. Nothing but that. So it's been... You can't, salvage, you can't salvage this type of an operation. When you see big cracks like this coming in, I mean, would those stop? Would they would they quit when they when they get out to here and then stop? Or and I've been getting a little bit of water underneath it. I don't know exactly what that's about. So it's pretty disappointing to be honest with you. And it seems untested. I can't see that no one else had had this problem. Maybe they ran it ten times and said, "Okay, we're, it's good for a lifetime now." I don't know. It seems quite a bit silly to be honest with you. And uh, the dishes, they go in okay. I have these blue dishes we uh, inherited. 
And um, you know what's nice about a countertop dishwasher is you end up doing the dishes before they get nasty. And I grew up with a nice Maytag, and and we would let them sit for a while before we did the dishes. So those dishes kind of hang over because they're heavy, and they barely fit, to be honest with you. And I got these Noritake ones. And uh, I you can usually get about three plates in here. It's tough with plates. It's not. Uh, it's not the easiest. Those blue ones are are pretty tough. It's better if they lean forward a little bit. You can put them in there like this, and they'll do okay. But they're not going to get much spray. So that's better. I like this type of thing. These are a little bit too wide, and I had thought about bending it up, but I didn't end up doing it. You know, they have like this type of plate. These are stained. This is like a microwave plate. You just stain. It'll get clean as clean as you could get it with um, by hand. But being that it's stained, it's just what you get. And then this down here, this would have been nice if this had a basket a little bit better because the spoons, they go in like this. If you put them like this, they end up wanting to slide down through and then it gets into the spray bar. So you got to put them like this and then they hold water. So I've seen some other dishwashers that have a little bit finer of a mesh there. And, uh, you know, their, their ad, it shows someone kind of mad that they have to do dishes on it. And, uh, you know, that was us. One other thing is bottles. This whole thing right here, a bottle fits right here perfectly. They show other things, but yeah, you put a bottle there. And you could put four or five in there. I don't know how well it would get sprayed right here. Probably, yeah, it'll get sprayed there. I just moved the spray bar a little bit, and it would get it. So, you know, you can uh, you can put. Unfortunately, I'm still drinking out of my uh, my cup. Otherwise, well, there's a cup down there. I'll get it. So you just put a cup in. It holds like, I mean, honestly, easily five to ten dishes. You could get really savvy. I mean, you can get like the tongs in there and stuff in there like this. You can get kind of savvy. You get good at it. Where it's like, all right, well, I want to get these in there. So, and, uh, you know, we even bought upgrades. I bought an accessory. I was getting excited about this accessory. And you can put, uh, like whatever in there it's like the only one I could find that was small enough this isn't exactly ideal it's very sensitive to whether or not it gets sprayed on I would probably just do that you could probably fit a couple more in there but that's the general idea of it so I got this power ball they don't really have a place to put it, so I was just putting it on the, uh, right there on the thingamabob, the strainer. So this is um, three washes. This is five washes. This is, I believe, two washes with no heat. So if you have problems and it's airing out and the, the pump won't start, just put it on that one and wait. And then it'll start. I don't recommend buying this because of the problems I'm having. But say they fix their plastic issues. It's actually it mainly works fine. I, I wish that this was going to work out. Uh, this one drains it. So this just runs the drain. It says 
disinfect, but it just, if you have problems, you put it on this one and, and it will uh, drain it. So maybe there's a bunch of gook in there and it stopped running correctly. You can at least get the stuff out of there. And uh, clean by itself is like, uh, I forgot what that is. I think it's two with heat or something. This has heat, I believe. And then this was like two or three without heat. This is five and that's three. So uh, we were running it on five, honestly. So you press here until you get there and then you just wait. And that's it, there's no other interaction with it. You can turn it back off. Now real quick, I just stopped it. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the water line. If you notice here, there's a water line that goes, you gotta, if you get this, it has to be level and you can just look at that water line. And uh, right about there, you just take, look at how thick that is and you make sure it's the same all the way around. You get, it's really sensitive to whether or not it's level because of how little water is in there, that if it's not level, you're gonna have so much less water and then it has a harder time getting to that strainer. So you can see it's reacting with that, um, that uh, power ball and everything going on there. It looks like a reaction, uh, the PVA maybe. But it, it just warms the, the water up, but it gets cold and hot, cold and hot. It gets hot and then it brings in cold water and then it gets hot and then brings in cold water. That's quick. We'll go to strong wash. It's a little dirty. I could wipe it off. This is a nice mic. It's a Sony. I wish Sony made dishwashers. Yeah, this is a historical home, so I didn't want to have to uh, go through the paperwork to tear down those cabinets, but I think I'm going to go ahead and see what it takes to uh, get some different cabinets put in because that will allow me more room and I will be able to get whatever dishwasher I want. Okay, so that was the piece of gunk, that was this, and it's knocking around in me. So this has like a pond pump in there, uh, like a submersible style that has the floating impeller on a magnet. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a lot like what you would use in a fish tank. And uh, you can hear it knock around when it first turns on. It's, you can use the impeller knock around and I've actually put my finger down that hole and felt the impeller and it's very similar to what you would find in like a mag drive on pump. But it does, I believe, have thermal protection, which I ran into a few times with it. It was actually uh, thermaling out a little bit. Or something. It was failing. It wasn't running very well at all. It was spraying water the whole time, but it would just it would just not fill and air out a lot of the times. And I did that for like 10 times, and we were thinking we were going to return it. And then it started working normally and, and every day for us now for a good week, and we've been pretty excited about it because it's made our lives a heck of a lot easier. And we were thinking about all the things we could do with the time we're saving. And now, with these cracks showing up, now we're back to our original sentiment, which is kind of sad. And now, uh, I'm actually embracing 
countertop dishwashers and trying to figure out where I go from here. And uh, I honestly don't want to be associated with this dishwasher, but I do want to put a video out there because it would have saved me the time of buying it if someone else had done the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this video out there and uh, maybe I'll, I'll do another dish countertop dishwasher video when I uh, figure out what my next washer will be. We had considered the 18 inch floor washers, but um, we just don't really have a lot of room here. And uh, I would have put it over here. We just bought this table. This is like a, uh, a really nice table. And so that's going to take up the room that we could have put an 18 inch, possibly. But we just decide to go with this. But honestly, I don't like bending over, especially with dishes. So I like the countertop dishwasher. I don't think that's really brought up enough with these countertop dishwashers is that you do not bend over. And with every other kind of dishwasher, a lot of times you do. So keeping your back straight is a, is a thing to do, and I like that. That's my preference. Anyway, that's all. I could go, uh, go on and on and on. But these cracks are taking me out. Those cracks are dictating the situation. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you not buy this dishwasher. Uh, I'm not going to plug myself on this one. It's just kind of a loss all the way around. I spent, I ordered this, let me say this, I ordered it three times. I, and it may be because people were hesitant to send it out knowing what it was, but uh, I ordered it first on eBay for $220, and then they refunded me and they didn't ship, and then I ordered it on Walmart, and they shipped the wrong item, and I got refunded. And then I bought this on Amazon, and now I have to go through Amazon Returns and uh, explain to someone who probably, I don't know, possibly, I don't know how that went, but uh, or if they tested it, someone who hasn't tested it or doesn't own one themselves is going to get the return. Uh, so I made point to this video. And they say, hey, it's still working. You have nothing to worry about. Yeah. And I have to argue that point. But I had cracks showing up, and I don't think this was well thought out. And then, you know, they could say, well, it's an opinion or something. I don't know. I think it's obvious to most normal people that work hard for their money. You know, if you just have a lot of disposable money, then you just probably think this is like a firework. And it's done now. And uh, it popped. So buy another one. But honestly... The time it took to hook it up and, and think about having it and dealing with it and using it, it's just been a waste of money, time, and energy. And so I'm going to conclude the video now. I'm going to say, better luck next time.